Okay, so, all right, so I am live on my lunch break, and I normally don't do this type of thing. I normally don't talk about politics so much anymore, but I thought I'd make this video and I would talk about what is happening in the Labour Party and what is happening in the UK right now. It's lovely and rainy, you can see right here. And so basically this morning, I woke up and I'm at work and I'm reading the investigation into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party and they come out and they said that there are obviously numerous flaws with what has happened. There is loads of political interference and things like that. I understand it and I'm going to go into how I feel about the whole issue in a sec. But yeah, so the report comes out and it was leaked earlier so we kind of knew what it was going to say. And upon it coming out, Jeremy Corbyn responded and said that he tried his best, he did all he could. A lot of the Labour Party bureaucracy stopped him from effectively combating anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. They mentioned things that, you know, like Ken Livingston's comments um, about Hitler and everything. So yeah, I, I totally concede there is a, a problem of anti-Semitism in British politics, including the Labour Party. But I'm going to get into how anti-Semitism under Keith Starmer, also known as Sir Keir Starmer, has been used to effectively purge the left from the Labour Party. So Jeremy Corbyn has been suspended. He's going to be investigated. In my mind, I hope he leaves and starts his own party. He's already in the socialist group of MPs and everything. And I hope that is what he'll do going forward because the Labour Party is effectively going Blairite with a touch of Toryism now. So Keith Starmer, I'm not gonna call him Keir Starmer because he shouldn't be named after the founder of the Labour Party. Keith Starmer, started off his campaign saying there's going to be no tolerance of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, which is you know, a totally fair thing to say and a fine thing to say. And then what actually happened, sorry, people um, in, in the park as well, but then what actually happened was Rebecca Long-Bailey, who was a Jeremy Corbyn follower who ran against Keith Starmer, first, this is the first instance, shared an article where the writer said that the IDF often kneel on the necks of Palestinians and drew the comparison to what was happening with George Floyd in America. Perfectly fine criticism. As most of you will know, the IDF is obviously the Jewish, not the Jewish, is obviously the Israeli Defense Force, which is made up with a lot of Jewish people because Israel has a majority of Jewish population, but the IDF also has a lot of Arab fighters, including, and Israel itself has a lot of Arabs in it that aren't Palestinian, you know, you have Lebanese Christians, and you have various Christian groups as well. So you can't say that the IDF and criticising the IDF is anti-Semitic, but Keith Starmer said there was no room for that in the Labour Party and kicked Rebecca Long-Bailey off the front bench. Recently, there's been a bill in the House of Commons where they're trying to make it so if a British soldier commits war crimes, after five years, you don't have to prosecute them anymore. Keith Starmer trying to appeal to... I guess nationalists and patriots said to the Labour Party, you better abstain on the voting and don't vote against it. When people did vote against it, he kicked them off the front bench as well. Front bench as well. So that's more of the left gone out of the front bench. And then the Jeremy Corbyn stuff today is just the final nail in the coffin. That is the left purge from the Labour Party. And I feel like it's a really ridiculous strategy because by you know using weaponized anti-Semitism where you're not actually using the right definitions of anti-Semitism because you're saying criticize, criticizing the Israeli Defense Force is apparently anti-Semitic. And as I've outlined, the Israeli Defense Force has non-Jews in it. So how can an, the Israeli Defense Force and criticism towards it be anti-Semitic and you're basically yourself being anti-Semitic by stereotyping Israel as representative of all Jewish people, which we know is an anti-Semitic trope as well. Now, Keith Starmer is probably gleeful and he probably planned this all along to get rid of Jeremy Corbyn. Well, let's talk about things going forward. I said on Twitter, I'm never going to vote for the Labour Party and I mean it. it. I've already been disgusted at Keith Starmer's leadership and, you know, the stuff about the spy bill, making MPs abstain on a bill which would legalise undercover cops the ability to commit crimes as part of their work and they could get off the hook for it. Obviously, I already mentioned they abstained on a bill to make... Um, well, essentially to l allow soldiers to get away with war crimes. I'm already unimpressed by that. And then purging the left from the party is disgusting in my opinion and I don't think it's a winning strategy. So I, a lot of people online were saying stuff like the Tories have already won the 2024 election. And I feel that's true because you've alienated people like me. I don't want to be associated with a neoliberal Blairite party. You know, and here's, here's another point. Keir Starmer isn't zero tolerance on anti-Semitism. Someone, I think it's a shadow, um, 
maybe the Shadow Health Secretary or Shadow Home Secretary, Rachel Reeves, praised the first woman MP just recently. The first woman MP in this country was also a massive fan of Adolf Hitler. If you have zero tolerance on anti-Semitism, why aren't you booting her out of the party? And let's talk about the general problem with anti-Semitism in British politics. Boris Johnson has wrote a book in 2004 which uses anti-Semitic caricatures. Why aren't we talking about that? Why aren't we talking about Tory racism? Of course, I'm going to say for now, so it's on record, Labour Party does have a problem of anti-Semitism. You know, Ken Liverton's comments about Hitler being a Zionist, where he's mis mischaracterizing a program in Nazi Germany which transported Jews to um, Palestine and saying that Hitler was somehow a Zionist who went crazy and then killed Jews. That's obviously extremely problematic and anti-Semitic and I supported him being kicked out of the Labour Party. But then saying criticizing Israel, criticizing the IDF is anti-Semitic, while apparently when it's your chums who are praising who are praising an MP who praised Adolf Hitler, that is totally fine. So of course anti-Semitism is an issue. We see it in American politics, but just supporting Israel 100 percent doesn't mean you're not an anti-Semite. Donald Trump has said extremely anti-Semitic things, but of course he supports Israel 100 percent He supports Netanyahu's agenda 100 percent So they're naming a town after him in the Golan Heights. That does not mean he's not a racist, doesn't mean he's not racist against Jews, doesn't mean he hasn't said racist things against Jews. But again, this is just how the media plays it. And it's really frustrating to me. So in summary, the Labour Party has purged the left from the party. And this is going to alienate a lot of people. And what I'm hoping in an ideal world, there's a socialist campaign group of MPs in the Labour Party. I'm hoping they break off and form a new socialist party. Um, and I feel like it would get a lot of support because what did the Labour Party even stand for now? You stand for, you know, Keir Starmer. You stand for letting soldiers get away with war crimes. You stand for letting undercover cops do whatever the hell they want. You make your MPs abstain on that or you purge them from, from leadership positions in the party. Do you think it's going to win over young people like me? And where are your solutions? You don't even offer any opposition to the government right now. It's just disgraceful. And he is our Joe Biden in, in British politics. And... Again, someone said join the Greens. I voted for the Greens in the European election and I'm not going to vote for Labour ever. And I don't need to at the moment because I live in an area which is Lib Dem or Tory. But I'm obviously going to move around in my life. And yeah, they're never getting my vote. And I feel I share you know, a similar sentiment with, with the many young people in the country where Jeremy Corbyn stood up for things that I believed in. He stood up to you know, what we've been indoctrinated our whole lives in terms of foreign policy, in terms of of the way Britain is run and all these propaganda, all this propaganda and myths we've been fed about capitalism, about you know how great this country is, has all been a lie. And he's the first person in my lifetime in mainstream politics to really stand up to that. And the reason anti-Semitism wasn't as a bigger thing in the tw in a run up to the 2017 election is because they didn't think Corbyn was going to win. And when his own party sabotaged him and he nearly won anyway, they all went hysterical. You would not believe how hard he was smeared in the lead up to the 2019 election last year. It was insane same levels. I have never seen anything like it. Bernie Sanders got it bad, but Jeremy Corbyn had it so much worse. And it's only used when it's convenient. Because when they thought he'd lose the 2017 election and be forced to stand down, then they didn't care so much then. But oh no, he might have won. He, he nearly did win, even with internal sabotage. And now everyone is totally hysterical about him, saying that if he won the election day, they'd all be marching into Jewish communities in London and trying to persecute them. Do you not know who this guy is? And go back, there's numerous articles on his record for standing up for Jewish communities in London and throughout the world. So the discourse has been so ruined, you can't have a nuanced conversation about it. And, you know, even me making this video, and if people saw this, you know, I put my YouTube on my CV sometimes, they'll be like, you're an anti-Semite for even, even saying this. And, and apparently just because I'm not 100% supportive of the, of the Israeli government's actions, I can be labelled an anti-Semite. And, and I'm trying to make the dis distinction and trying to defend people who make that distinction, but the politics has been so warped. And obviously we have quite a symbiotic relationship with Israel. You know, we're very in in influential and instrumental in their founding. And they're one of our key allies in the Middle East. So we, you know, the status quo and the political elite in this country have, have you know, an incentive to keep good relations with them because it benefits us in, in our whole you know middle eastern apparatus where you know we use the saudis we use the israelis we use the gulf countries who are on our side to really push forward our foreign policy agenda so we don't want to alienate them but the tories are just rubbing their hands together they have such a problem with racism they're an institutionally racist party they're an institutionally anti-semitic party but now it looks like there's only one racist party in britain and that is on the fault of the centrist people in labor who are purging the left from it and that is the fault 
fact of the mainstream press who cannot have a nuanced discussion on these issues, who cannot even understand them. And I'm, I'm referring back to the IDF criticism of, you know, Rebecca Long Bailey sharing an article she didn't even write. And apparently that's, that's anti-Semitic while Keir, Keir Starmer's, you know, one of her, his key allies in, in the shadow cabinet can tweet her, her support for the first email for the first female MP who championed Adolf Hitler's views. So that is all from me. Um, Apologise for taking so long. I hope you enjoy this little rant I have on my live stream. Again, look, I am on my lunch break, so I hope you appreciate me taking the time out for doing that. Um, I also made a video last night and I don't really want to cannibalise the views of it. So please check out my video just on a normal topic about uh, weeaboos and the sanitization of Japan's right wing. Uh, maybe a new video tonight and we'll see how everything goes. Also, I'll probably live stream the election next week. So um, I thank you all for tuning in. If you only came in later, I'm going to upload this video onto my channel. So go back and watch it from the start. And yeah, follow me on social media. Check out everything in the description. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.